You're about to learn how to use the squeeze theorem to quickly crush this limit problem. And if you want to become a number ninja who aces our calculus exam, take a look at that subscribe button and strike first, strike hard, and no mercy. <sighs> Before solving this problem, there's a useful property that you need to remember with the squeeze theorem. It basically tells us that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x gives you a result that's one. And I'm not going to prove this theorem in the video because it's a little involved and it's not the whole point of this. But what I do want to show you is how to actually use this to solve the problem I gave you. Before we can actually just plug things in and quickly solve it, there's a dilemma. Because with the squeeze theorem here, you have a constant of 1 in front of x, both on the numerator and the denominator. But for the limit I gave you, you've got a 5 on top and a 4 on bottom. So before actually plugging in the squeeze theorem to quickly solve these limits, we need to play a little bit of a manipulation game here to actually rewrite this limit in such a way where we get constants that look the same in front of x on both the numerator and denominator. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and actually multiply the numerator and denominator by whatever I see in front of x. And so for the top and bottom, looking at sine of 5x on the numerator, let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by 5x. And we're going to do the same thing for the denominator sine of 4x. And the reason why I'm doing this is even though the problem looks like it's more difficult now because you've got more terms, the fact that we have a product of terms here actually let us use a really cool trick remembering the properties of how limits work. Do you happen to see it? Okay, so remember that when we have a product of terms, we can break it up into a product of limits. But before we do that, we want to make sure that for each fraction that we have, whatever you have on the top in terms of x has the same constant in front of it, like the bottom, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into a product of three fractions where we're going to take the limit of each one. And for each fraction, we want x to look the same on the top and bottom. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to have the first fraction be sine of 5x over 5x. The second fraction will be 4x over sine of 4x. And then the last fraction will be the remaining terms, which will be 5x over 4x. And when I break this up, you now have a product of these fractions and the limits themselves become a product of limits also, right? So now we have a limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over 5x times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x over 4x. And then this right-hand limit looks really easy because if you look at the right-hand side, notice how the x's cancel out. So that limit just simply becomes 5 over 4, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle that one first and that result 5 over 4, I'm going to bring it in front and multiply it by the other two remaining limits. Now, I'm going to choose one of these two because the way to solve them is the same approach. Let's start with the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over 5x. Now, this is kind of like the squeeze theorem now because you have the same constant in front of x on the top and the bottom. But we can use yet another really cool trick here. Do you happen to see it? Okay, we can do a u substitution. I'm going to go ahead and let u just simply be this 5x term. But we have to also remember, okay, well, x was approaching 0 before, so what does u approach? Because we want to make sure that we don't change the value of convergence of the original limit. Well, it's pretty obvious, right? When x gets infinitesimally small to something extremely close to 0, u is going to do the same thing. And so the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over 5x can be rewritten in a way where we simply plug in what u is, and we get this new limit as u approaches 0, because now we have a new variable, of sine of u over u. And guess what? That's where we can use the squeeze theorem that we talked about above. Because whether it's x or u, we know that that important property can now be used. And the approach to solve the remaining limit is the same. And that's going to be for you to go ahead and do. So let me know what you come up with.